Cameroonian students and school staff who were kidnapped on Saturday have been freed. A total of 176 people, mostly students, were kidnapped by gunmen at St. Augustine's College in Kumbo in the northwest region of Cameroon. The Bishop of Kumbo says they were released after negotiations. It's the largest school kidnapping in Cameroon's English-speaking region since separatist unrest began in 2017. Human Rights Watch has accused rebel groups of being behind the kidnapping, but they have not yet commented. The rebels also accused the government of staging previous abductions to damage their reputation. The abduction of the school children and staff marks an escalation of the two-year-long crisis that has gripped the two English-speaking northwest and southwest region. Joining us now is Okwi Okwala, an African affairs analyst, to discuss more on this issue. Dr. Okwi, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Obviously, this isn't the first time we've had an issue like this. Last November, I believe, in Bamenda, more than 80 children, students were kidnapped and also staffs as well. What do you make of this latest kidnapping? Well, it shows that the situation in northwest and southwest Cameroon is getting more dangerous. Remember, it started just like uh, as a protest by lawyers and teachers demanding that the English language should be used in courts and in classrooms. Then, in 2017, you know, it, it became a full demand for independence, and the separatist group have emerged, up to 10 of them as we speak. And the situation and the agitation, they are beginning to hold territories, sometimes, I mean, although they rove, but the situation in, in, in um, English-speaking Cameroon is getting more and more dangerous. And the president and the cabinet should engage in nation building. Some of these things happen because some people, nationals, think they are not being they are being treated as second-class citizens. And that's what is happening. But then the unfortunate thing now is that, I mean, when it gets to this, to this extent of kidnapping children, I mean, harassing local, uh, local uh, rural dwellers, I mean, it, it has, it's become very dangerous and there, should, there is need for intervention, both from African leaders and, uh, and even world leaders. This tactic of kidnapping children is becoming kind of like a reoccurring trend now. And they're kind of blaming each other that it's the government, it's the rebels. Well, who do you think is behind this, actually? Well, you see, the, the, the separatists already wanted to enforce part of what, part of what they want, the, part, of their demand, part of their measures to attract attention is that schools should be closed. So I think some people, including myself, tend to, tend to suggest that, look, oh, this St. Augustine's College remained open while they said, okay, let's go, as part of protest, let us, um, let school be closed. And then we are, they remained open. So maybe it's an enforcement of that their demand that school should be closed. But then also they are saying, no, we are, we are not the ones that do this all the time. Government sometimes do it to, to give us a yeah. bad name. It is equally possible, but then, you know, um, it could be either way, but I think uh, they too. I mean, whether they, now what has happened also is that the Catholic Church, the owners of the school, mm -hmm. have now, as part of agreement to release the children, mm -hmm. have agreed to close down the school. Well, so, so that's the I agreement think, that... I, th I think that, is, that that's an indication that uh, even if they didn't do it directly, mm -hmm. they like what happened. The separatists. Well, what the rebels want is they want to create an independent state <laughs> called... Ambazonia. Do you think this is a wise call for independence? You see, um, it's better for them to, spend, to stay in a bigger country. Being a bigger country is always better. However, if being in a bigger country you will be seen as a second class citizen, you are deprived what other, other citizens of that country or other parts of that country is has have you know mm -hmm. then you men say okay instead of being staying here as a little less than a slave or a little just more than a slave let me let me be on our own that is what is happening so i mean the issue of nation building 
make welding the country together, making sure that every aspect of the, uh, every aspect, every citizen of the country feel belong and feel taken care of by the state is what. Otherwise, I mean, I don't think it is is in the interest of anybody to, I mean, have small small uh, states because. When you play at the world stage, you have, it's better if you have a bigger economy. It's better when you have a bigger market. It's better when you have um, when you, you 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 are stronger when you are together. However, if that means staying together, up small or less a slave, you will want to be on your own. And that is what the English speaking northwest and southwest of Cameroon they think that they are not getting what they deserve, and they think that even their language. That the, the, the initial demand was let English be used in courtrooms and classrooms where English is spoken. Mm -hmm. But then the, 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 the central government refers that, oh, even official language everywhere should be, should be French. And remember, they got constitute only 20%. Yeah. The, 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 the French speaking side of Cameroon constitutes about 80%. They said, so where, we, where we are, allow us to use English and. Um, and uh, in classrooms and uh, and, and um, courtrooms, but that was what was rejected, and that was that it was that from the, that agitation that I've been getting to this, uh, I've been uh, that have been incrementally moving to a more dangerous level. African Affairs Analyst Dr. Okwi Okpala, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for joining us on Network Africa. It's always my pleasure to be with you. You're watching Network Africa on channels television. Still ahead. More than 30,000 people celebrate the annual Amani Festival in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Please stay with us.